Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Rob Willis.info here, and in this video I want to talk about what is VMware, vSphere, ESXi, and vCenter, and what's the differences between the two products and when you should use each one. And more specifically, I'm going to be talking about vSphere, ESXi 6.5, and vCenter 6.5. So jumping right into things, what is VMware, vSphere, ESXi? So we'll download the ESXi image directly from VMware, and it's going to be an ISO image, and we'll install that on top of bare metal hardware, just like we would any other operating system. And it's going to act like a Type 1 hypervisor. So unlike running VMware Workstation, where you would normally boot into Windows or your Linux operating system, and then open up VMware Workstation and run VMs, this is going to be an operating system purely for running virtual machines. It's not going to do anything else, and that's why it's called a Type 1 hypervisor. So it's, this thing is going to boot up, and it's going to be able to run virtual machines, and that is it. So for the minimum hardware requirements, you're going to want to make sure you have a CPU that has at least two cores. Obviously, the more the better. Uh, a minimum of 4 gigabytes of RAM. And you want to make sure that the CPU also has support for Intel's VTX or AMD RVI. And that will enable support, support for 64-bit operating systems, which is going to be pretty much everything that you're going to see nowadays. Another handy feature that I didn't actually mention in the slides, um, but is a feature of the CPU that's good to have is EPT or extended page table support. And uh, that comes in handy if you're trying to attach a GPU to a virtual machine, or if you're trying to do some sort of nested virtualization, which is a good way to test Hyper-V. But EPT support is not mandatory for getting yourself up and running with a basic ESXi install and uh, getting virtual machines going. Also, it definitely helps out to have multiple physical NICs installed in the host machine. Uh, it's not mandatory. You could totally get by with either a single, you know, like gigabit link or anything like that. Um, but it definitely helps to have multiples because you're going to have virtual machine traffic, management network traffic, vMotion traffic, all that kind of stuff once you really get up and running. So I would say the minimum two gigabit links, um, but you could definitely get by with just one in like a lab environment. Moving on, uh, ESXi by itself allows for the basic creation and management of virtual machines and the virtual networking that goes along with a single host. The vSphere management interface is going to be web-based and you'll access that through a web browser by browsing to the IP address of the ESXi host itself. And then from there you'll be prompted for a login screen and you can log in and manage the host directly. From what I can tell in my testing, you can still connect to ESXi host directly with the old uh, vSphere client, the C Sharp or the FAT client as it's called. Um, but you cannot log into vCenter 6.5 with that client, but you can directly connect to host still. And for my final bullet point, there is a free version. I'll put the links to uh, all that down below and on my blog as well. Um, but if you sign up for a free VMware account, they will give you a license that's pretty relaxed as far as just running ESXi by itself. And uh, it's definitely worth checking out if you're worried about paying for it or anything like that. There's totally a free version and it's actually pretty useful and the license is pretty relaxed. Now let's talk about a typical ESXi server layout. On the left hand side you're going to see an ESXi host and that's going to represent some sort of physical hardware. Now that could be a Dell PowerEdge server, an HP, a Blade server. This could be a white box that you have laying around that you just want to try and eat, run ESXi on. I mean as long as it boots it, it you should be good to go. I mean, that's what I did with my first ESXi machine. I had an old uh, gaming box that the motherboard died, bought a new motherboard and I managed to boot ESXi 4.1 on it and get some virtual machines up and running. So whatever you got, but some sort of physical hardware. Now in this case, we're gonna say that it has two CPUs and each one of those CPUs has six cores available, uh, along with 72 gigabytes of RAM and 500 gigs of local storage. Now for storage, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have plenty of disk IO available if you're expecting good performance. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to look into things like SSDs, uh, RAID configurations, uh, RAID 5, RAID 10, things like that. Um, or you could just run a single virtual machine per single disk if you're not worried about um, redundancy. Um, but you want to make sure that you have plenty of disk I.O. available if you're expecting good performance. So this is kind of a perfect use case for ESXi. On the left hand side we have a physical machine that's kind of too powerful to run any single machine with a real purpose and not waste cycles, not waste CPU cycles in memory for how we're intending to use it. So what we do is we take that piece of hardware install ESXi on top of it, and then we can divide it up into multiple virtual machines that use portions of those resources. So if you notice on the right hand side, we have three virtual machines running on top of this physical piece of hardware. 
So the three virtual machines that I have provisioned here, you notice that there's a Windows machine with four vCPUs, 12 gigabytes of RAM, multiple disks for the storage. Um, the next up, there's a Linux machine with three vCPUs, eight gigs of RAM, and 60 gigs of storage. And then lastly, there's a PFSense machine with two vCPUs, four gigabytes of RAM, and 20 gigabytes of storage. And that's gonna act as our firewall and IDS detection system. And all of these virtual machines are connected together through the vSwitch, or the virtual networking on the host. So even though we only have one physical piece of hardware, I now have three additional machines on my network in addition to the ESXi host itself. Each one of these machines is going to receive its own IP address. For the Windows machine, I'll have to log in and manage it, manage it through like RDP. The Linux machine, I'll have to SSH into it. The PFSense machine, I'll manage it through the web UI. But each machine is going to be its completely own entity with its own resources allocated to it. And if you notice in this case, I gave the Windows machine 4, I gave the, the Linux machine 3, and then the PFSense machine 2 vCPUs. So altogether, I've only actually allocated 9 vCPUs. And if you notice that my physical machine actually has 12 cores available. So altogether, I still actually have 3 cores available. So I ha have additional resources, and obviously on the RAM 2, I didn't come anywhere near 72 gigabytes of RAM. So I have additional resources that I can now allocate to future virtual machines if I want to run them as well, which is a huge benefit of doing this and running virtual machines on top of your physical hardware rather than allocating the whole machine to a single operating system. Also, if I begin to realize that I've oversized or undersized any one of my existing virtual machines, I can also just dynamically change that at any time and resize that virtual machine, giving it more or less resources. ESXi by itself doesn't actually have a GUI, so if you were to sit and watch a physical host boot, this is all you would see. You'll notice at the bottom that if we hit F2, we can set some customization like networking options and stuff like that. Otherwise, the only other option is to uh, shut down or reboot the host, and that's it. The majority of the time, you'll actually be managing the ESXi host itself through the web management console, and you'll access that by uh, on a remote host typing in the IP address of the uh, ESXi host itself into your web browser, and you'll see that it'll pull up the web management console where you'll log in with the username and password that was created during the installation of ESXi. And then once logged in, we can do everything from create new virtual machines, manage the networking, add new adapters, change the failover order, add new vSwitches, all that kind of stuff as well as configure, configure the host itself. And um, say any of your virtual machines go offline, you, you're not able to SSH into it or RDP into it. This will also provide console access to those virtual machines and all of that kind of stuff. But this is the main way that an ESXi host is accessed and managed, and uh, that's it. So, but the only thing about this is you can only manage a single host at a time since we're connecting directly to the IP address and that's it and that's where vCenter comes in if you want to manage more than one host at a time that's where you really need to start looking at vCenter but for now we have a single host we can run multiple virtual machines we're not going to be able to move virtual machines between hosts if we do have multiple ESXi hosts on our network uh, that's another thing that that's where vCenter comes in um, but for now you can run a bunch of single hosts if you want and the management will be a little tricky you can do some things like SCP hosts our virtual machines from one host to the other um, but they'll be ha they'll have to be offline and whatnot um, but you can do it but it, it gets a little bit janky you can also script some of those things as well um, but for the most part this is a great solution to run a few virtual machines on a few single hosts and you're not really worried about backups you're not really worried about redundancy or high availability and uh, this is a totally free solution at this point so that brings me to my next point with what is VMware vCenter now, vCenter is typically deployed as a virtual machine on top of an ESXi host. So you're either going to deploy the VMware server appliance or the VCSA, which in previous builds was actually based on top of SUSE Linux. Um, but as of 6.5, it's actually based on top of VMware's Photon OS. But the uh, server appliance is basically a pre-rolled, pre-configured solution, and there's different sizes available for the deployments. Um, but it's a pre-rolled solution that is built for HA, and it is very easy to configure. Uh, the other way to go would be to deploy it on top of a Windows virtual machine. And uh, you also need to tie it to an uh, MS SQL database, and you also need to set up some DSNs and connection strings and stuff like that for that. So there's a little bit more management overhead with the uh, Windows deployment, um, but that is still out there. 
but the uh, server appliance is definitely the preferred and easier way to go nowadays. So once you have vCenter provisioned to your environment, it will provide a central management interface to manage all of your ESXi hosts and virtual machines, as well as the networking and all that stuff associated with those hosts. And um, it actually includes two management interfaces. There's the uh, traditional flash interface, which, which most people will complain about because it tends to be a little bit slow, but is, it, it is still the most full-featured console that is available to manage um, vCenter and your ESXi host. Uh, but there is an additional HTML5 based console and it's a lot quicker to load and a lot quicker on basically every single task and it's a it's a lot cleaner in the uh, the interface itself um, but it's not as full featured but it does have all of the features that you'll need to complete the majority of your day-to-day -day tasks lastly probably the most important bullet point for and reason for having vCenter in your environment is vCenter allows for advanced features like virtual machine cloning uh, vMotion and SVMotion, high availability, fault tolerance, DRS or distributed resource scheduling which is basically load balancing your VMs across multiple hosts and much much more. So basically vCenter enables you to have a lot of features that uh, allow you to move virtual machines back and forth between hosts. Sometimes the majority of the time while they're on with no downtime, sometimes you may have to power that virtual machine off and move it. But still there's a lot of uh, a lot of fluid movement between hosts whenever you have vCenter. So when you take into account the advanced advanced features that vCenter provides and you combine them with the functionality of PowerCLI, you can really create a lot of automation in your environment and you can do th you can script out tasks that your administrators would normally be doing every day or consistently on a regular scheduled basis and just fully automate those as scheduled tasks and and not only does it make life easier on them but it also promotes consistency in the environment and it also in the end most likely increase your overall uptime and provisioning and reduce your provisioning times as well and you can do this with the PowerShell that your administrators already know so there's no learning curve all they have to do is pick up a few additional commandlets and they can hit the ground running alright so this is just a basic diagram of what a typical vCenter environment is going to look like so on the left hand side you'll see the vCenter appliance and that's actually going to be running on top of one of these ESXi hosts as a virtual machine um, but once that uh, the vCenter appliance is up and running we can then go ahead and add the ESXi host into the inventory for the vCenter appliance and then once those hosts are added into the inventory, it'll automatically pick up any virtual machines associated with those hosts. And then we can manage the host and the virtual machines on them. So we can uh, manage the configuration of the host. We can create new virtual machines, um, power machines on, and all that kind of stuff. Edit their settings and all that. Um, but in addition to just that basic functionality that we had with the other, uh, just the ES ESXi console, we can also do advanced things. For example, we can now vMotion uh, virtual machines from one host to the other. Uh, we can also clone virtual machines. So we, if we have a, a golden image or something like that, we can go ahead and clone that to another virtual machine. Uh, you can also turn it into a template for fast provisioning as well if it's a, a, a template that you want to use all the time, like your standard w uh, Windows 2012 image or something like that. Um, and then we also have other features like the DRS, like say we put the host into a cluster and we have some shared storage. Uh, we can then enable advanced functionality like DRS or distributed resource scheduling, where if any uh, host in the cluster is too busy, it'll automatically move virtual machines to a host that is less busy. Um, and there's also high availability and fault tolerance, where if anything happens to a particular host, it'll automatically start those virtual machines up on another host that isn't, isn't having issues at that time to make sure that our uh, virtual machines keep running. Having vCenter in the environment also enables some of the more advanced networking features like distributed vSwitches, which is like a regular vSwitch except it's a switch that's distributed across multiple hosts, which makes it very easy to configure because it's all done from the central vCenter console, rather than configuring it on each host individually. Alright, so now I'm just going to give you a quick view of what it looks like when the server appliance is fully booted up and at the console. So uh, I'm actually on an ESXi host here, the one uh, hosting the server appliance, and I'm just going to right click and pull up the console and uh, show you what it looks like real quick. Uh, but you'll see that it's a very basic console, it looks very similar to the ESXi host, um, but this one's going to be blue and gray rather than the yellow and gray. And we see that it provides some basic uh, information about the host and the, all the URLs that we need to manage and access vCenter, as well as manage the server appliance itself. 
And um, but that's it. That's all you really do here. You'll see there's the F2 and the F12 at the bottom to uh, shut down and restart it and customize it. But other than that, there's really not much you do. There's not really a GUI on the uh, server appliance. And so if we browse to the IP address of the vCenter appliance itself, you'll see that it has links to both the Flash base console and the new HTML5 one as well. Uh, so let's take a quick look at the Flash base console first. Uh, so if you've used the Flash base console before in the past, it should feel it should feel pretty similar. Uh, version 6.5 hasn't changed that much. Um, things have been rearranged a little bit. Uh, there's been some more speed tweaks and whatnot to the UI. Uh, it's definitely a lot faster and more responsive than it was in the past, but it still sees a lot of the same problems that are uh, typically associated with a Flash based UI. But this is the console where you will go to manage your entire vCenter instance. Um, this is where you'll manage and add all of your hosts, the virtual machines that are on them, uh, things like the DRS config, fault tolerance, all those advanced features, your uh, networking, distributed vSwitches, all of that will be managed through this console here. And so now I'm just going to quickly pull up the uh, HTML5 client, which you see is accessed by uh, accessing or typing in the IP address of the vCenter appliance itself, slash UI, and it should take you to the HTML5 client. Um, but you'll see that the UI looks uh, kind of similar to the Flash based one. We have a lot of the same options, but overall the UI is a little bit cleaner, and it's a lot more responsive overall as well. And you can still do the majority of your day-to-day -day task in the HTML5 client. Um, you can power machines on, get console access, edit their settings, um, migrate them, clone machines, all that kind of stuff. You just won't find some of the more advanced features ported over yet, um, but supposedly they are going to be eventually. Alright, so let's just quickly recap everything we talked about today. So we covered VMware vSphere ESXi, and the ESXi image is downloaded and installed on some bare metal hardware, just like any other operating system, and it's going to act as a type 1 hypervisor. And this is going to allow for the basic creation and management of virtual machines and the virtual networking that goes along with it. The vSphere management console or interface is going to provide access and management for a single host at a time. So you're going to access this by the, browsing to the IP address of the, the ESXi host itself in your web browser and that will allow you to manage any virtual machines and networking on that host. And there is a free license available from VMware. You can get it from their site. For, uh, you just sign up for a free account on VMware.com. And uh, they'll hook you up with the free license. And it's pretty relaxed. And it really works out great if you're just looking to run a few hosts and a, and a few virtual machines on top of those hosts. Um, which is a pretty typical if you're one of the running like your own home lab or something like that. This is a great use case for this license. I highly recommend you check it out. And I'll put links to all that stuff down below and on my blog as well. And next up we have VMware vCenter. So when you get to the point where you have you know, more than just a few individual hosts and virtual machines running on top of them and it's kind of becoming a lot to manage, is really when you want to bring vCenter into your environment and pair it with your ESXi host. So vCenter itself is typically going to be, typically going to be deployed as either the VMware vCenter server appliance or the vCSA or there is an install package available for Windows that can be paired with my, or MS SQL and all of that stuff. Um, but it is going to provide a central management interface and you can manage all of your ESXi hosts from that central console as well as the networking, data stores, all of the associated stuff that goes along with your host and their virtual machines. vCenter actually comes with two management consoles, the uh, traditional flash based console as well as the new uh, HTML5 based console. And lastly, one of the biggest selling points about having vCenter in your environment is all of the advanced features that it brings with it, like uh, VM cloning, uh, vMotion and storage vMotion, uh, high availability, fault tolerance, DRS, and, and much, much more. Um, it really is an enterprise-grade um, solution and a set of features that you can really trust um, to run your environments on top of, especially when uptime and availability is of high concern. And I think that's where I'm going to wrap this one. I hope that it gives you a little more of an idea of what VMware ESXi is and, uh, and the idea of how virtual machines run on top of it, uh, as well as when to bring vCenter into your environment and what exactly it is used for and, and what features it brings along with it. I know a lot of guys, when they're first starting to get into the VMware products and, and whatnot, they seem to get easily confused and it kind of just all turns into one jim big jumbled mess. So uh, that was kind of my intent with this video was to kind of break it up, make it easy to digest and know that, you know, this is what ESXi is used for and this is when you need to bring vCenter in and the features that it provides. 
In the upcoming weeks, I'll actually be covering how to uh, install VMware ESXi onto a host machine, as well as how to deploy a VMware vCenter server appliance in your environment. And uh, both of those will be version 6.5, um, but I'll be covering both the ESXi hypervisor itself and the uh, vCenter server appliance, and then adding some hosts into the inventory and all that kind of stuff. So uh, make sure you stay tuned and check those out whenever they're released. And uh, as always, I uh, thank you for watching.